This video is sponsored by Morning Brew. New York wakes to a second sunrise, but this one burns hotter than the surface of the sun. It sets fire to the grass, boils the river, and even melts steel beams. And worst of all, there is no defense to this Nazi super weapon. You might have heard of this project before, but believe me, when you see this video, you'll realize that Hitler was far more insane than you have ever imagined. With solar factories, farms, and dormitories aboard, it was more ambitious than any other space station built today, and would have truly propelled humanity to the stars, or wiped out the United States and its allies from the Earth. Join me today for the incredible Nazi fever dream, the Sun Gun. In 1923, a German rocket scientist came up with an ambitious idea. What if nighttime didn't have to happen? What if crops around the world could grow 24 seven? What if steam engines could operate without fuel? What if enemy cities could be vaporized? Yes, that's right. While the origin of the concept was clouded in peace, it actually had a sinister end objective to construct an orbital weapons platform capable of eliminating armies, boiling oceans and igniting huge forest fires. It would be called the Helio Beam or its far more catchier name, the Sun Gun. <laughs> Oh, that's a little bright. And this thing was huge, measuring at least over a kilometer big or 0.62 miles. This giant concave mirror would reflect the sun's rays to a sharp point, how sharp depending on the angle of the mirror, and it would have been much more than just a mirror. It would have also been a weather station and a military scout post, able to look down on the allies and see exactly what they were up to before they had even planned their operation. It would have been constructed in stages by rockets over a decade with a very optimistic timeline with crews living in space as they put the giant mirror together. It also would have had greenhouses to grow food and generate oxygen, contain living quarters, warehouses with plenty of other materials, all of this in zero gravity. Something that we have to admit was a little out of reach conceptually with the scientists at the time. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back to the madman behind the idea. This space station concept was so far ahead of thinking at the time that if it had been built, it would have appeared on the front page news across the globe. But if you lived back then, you would already know all about it thanks to the free daily newsletter Morning Brew. That's right, Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter that is delivered Monday to Sunday that is witty, relevant and informative. It cuts out all the fluff and tells you the main stories that you need to know. On my subscription today, I learned that I can pick up a giant dino skeleton cheap for only $5 million. I'm just 4.999 million short. Also I learned all about why the world's airports are in such a sorry state, broken down to a very clear and concise way. It's to do with staff. There's really no reason to not subscribe to Morning Brew if you're interested in aviation, space travel, business, finance, or cool tech, just like my videos. It's free and it only takes 15 seconds to subscribe. To get it and get a warm fuzzy feeling because you're helping support Escape Velocity, you can use the free link morningbrewdaily.com slash escape velocity. Back to the show. Like all crazy Nazi ideas, there was an equally crazy scientist behind it, Hermann Obert. He was one of the founding fathers of rocketry in the world, launching his first test rocket at 14 and joining the ranks of the Nazi space and rocket programs with the likes of the V2 inventor Werner von Braun. You might have to imagine that whilst he was working on his test rockets as a boy, he would notice how the sunlight would reflect off the surface of his shiny materials and illuminate the shadows. 
He also apparently noticed how the shining material would greatly annoy his elders, remarking in one interview many years later, my space mirror is like the hand mirrors that schoolboys use to flash circles of sunlight on the ceiling of their classroom. A sudden beam flashed on the teacher's face may bring unpleasant reactions. He would go on to publish his idea of a small mirror put into orbit in a way to reflect light to help generate power at night, act as a weather tower and a radio relay site in orbit. But as rocket technology in the 1920s and 30s was so limited and juvenile and that the economy in Germany was in tatters, it never took off. And that's where our story comes to a close. Or it would have if the infallible Hitler didn't see the idea and push it forward. In 1941, Hitler commissioned a study into the sun gun idea with a staggering budget of 3 million Reichmarks, which today's US dollars is around 150 million, to see an initial proposal. They fleshed out the idea of a space station that would sit around 3,000 kilometers or 5,100 miles above the Earth. The scientists calculated that a huge reflector made of metallic sodium and with an area of roughly 3.5 square miles would be large enough to do the job. It would be constructed of prefab sections that would allow easy construction in orbit. For the construction crews themselves, the crew would need to use magnetic shoes to move around in the zero gravity, and of course be attached by tethers so they didn't disappear off into space. These crews would replenish their food and oxygen with vast greenhouses that would be placed on the rear side of the mirror. They would be filled with pumpkin plants of all things, chosen for their hungry appetite of CO2. So if you're stationed on board this space station, you better hope that you like pumpkin soup. All of this would be powered by the sun, but not with solar panels as they were not really invented yet, but actually steam driven dynamos that would capture the sun's heat. The mirror would be rotated into position using rocket thrusters and when not in use would be rotated away from the earth as to not accidentally give any friendly fire. So you're probably asking yourself, Nick, this sounds fantastic. Why was it never built? Now that the Nazis had time to sit down and go over the proposal in detail, they realized that they would need a far more powerful rocket than the V2 to get into orbit and construct this station. It would also take them around 50 to 100 years to construct this weapon, which didn't really fall into the timeline that Hitler desperately needed later to win the war. Plus the astronomical amounts of time, money and resources that would be required to hoist the hundreds of tons of equipment into orbit, not to mention the million or so tons of metallic sodium that would need to somehow be acquired. Lastly, there was also one other flaw. The mirror would be so slow to rotate and travel around the Earth that it may not actually be effective as a weapon. Plus, the angle and size might not actually generate enough heat to even give someone a sunburn. This might have been fixed later with multiple other satellites, but considering the previous problems, that's laughable. But we can only imagine that had Hitler had such a weapon at his disposal, it would have very much created a hostage situation with the Nazi Third Reich preventing the entry of the USA into the war, melting the frozen Soviet winters for his troops, and perhaps even cementing the Nazis with the title of the first world superpower. With the defeat of the Nazis and the capture of the rocket scientists during Operation Paperclip, the project was evaluated and found very much wanting. Why work on a giant space mirror when nukes on rockets would do the trick? But the case wasn't entirely closed. 
Despite being retired in 1962, in later years Herman would still champion the idea, but for far more peaceful purposes, shining light to areas that require more for growth of the plants or melting heavy snow, and after witnessing the moon landings, remarked that materials could be constructed from the moon itself. In recent years, the concept has gotten a slight rebirth thanks to current technology. They didn't really have foldable materials back in the day, and using retractable sails would be possible with far less complexity. In addition, why use a single dish? A constellation of satellites like Elon Musk's Starlink could be formatted to beam down or reflect sunlight without the construction effort. Just quantity. It makes you wonder if someone has aspirations to be a supervillain. It's hard to say if this would be any real use today outside of the horrifying plans of the Nazis, but I like to think that with a spark of imagination, a giant space mirror would find a place somewhere. Ironically, a giant mirror like this would be useful for other planets in our solar system. For example, Mars is further away and therefore colder. A second sun in the sky, shining down on an area of settlement, could have above average temperatures. As for the moon, who's to say that nightfall needs to last two weeks? And for a hot planet like Venus, if a mirror was used to block out the light instead of reflecting it onto the surface, it would allow it to rapidly cool and become ever so slightly more habitable. But a topic like using a giant space mirror for outward space colonization is best kept for a future video. Thanks for watching my little video about the nutty Nazis. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to Morning Brew to keep up to date with the latest technology advancements in space travel. Use my link morningbrewdaily.com slash escapevelocity.